Behind me is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, believed to be the location of the Golgotha, where Jesus is crucified, and the location of the tomb itself. Who built the church? This church is one of the four churches built by Helena, the mother of Constantine, in the beginning of the fourth century. She builds a huge basilica known as the Anastasis. Why? Because of the resurrection that takes place in the tomb. That church was ruined by the Persians in 614, rebuilt. We are looking at a renovation by the Crusaders. We're standing in the Golgotha, and remember we are following in the footsteps of Jesus from the place of the trial to the place of the crucifixion, the Golgotha. Jesus is crucified on the Golgotha. What does Golgotha mean? In Hebrew, Golgolet is a skull. This place must be outside the wall at the time of the crucifixion. It is a deserted quarry, an open field with a rocky hilltop that from the wall of Jerusalem looks like a skull. The people of Jerusalem call it the skull. Crucifixion in the morning, death on the cross, three o'clock in the afternoon. What is the cause of death on the cross? Asphyxiation, the collapse of the lungs. It would usually take days and days for people to die on the cross. In the case of Jesus, crucifixion in the morning, death on the cross, three o'clock in the afternoon. Look at this beautiful mosaic, which was redone by Antonio Barluzzi in the spirit of what the Crusaders did at the time of Queen Melisanda when she renovates the church to celebrate Jubilee, 50 years of the Christian kingdom control over Jerusalem. And the other side of the Golgotha itself, these are the Greek Orthodox, and we notice this immediately by the way the lamps are hung, the decoration, the iconography is totally different. When we look at the cross itself, we see both Marys standing on both sides of Jesus, and if we look at the top of the cross itself, we see the sign in three languages, the abbreviation in Greek, in Hebrew, uh, and in uh, uh, Latin, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. The people are queuing up to touch the precise location where the cross uh, stood according to the tradition here uh, in the church. What happens after Jesus dies on the cross? Let's go downstairs and find out. This modern mosaic behind me from the year 1900 tells us the story of what happens after Jesus dies on the cross. Now remember, Jesus dies on the cross as a Jew and he must be buried according to the halakha, Jewish law. Jews do not leave a body overnight and Jews do not bury on a Saturday. It is Friday afternoon. The body must be prepared for burial and buried immediately. Where is the preparation for the burial done? According to the tradition here in the church, it is here on what is known as the christening stone or the anointing stone. The body is laid, prepared for burial, wrapped in shrouds, and from here will be taken to the tomb donated by Joseph of Arimathea. When I look here uh, on this mosaic, what I see is the body of Jesus taken off the cross, and under it is the skull. This has everything to do with Christian theology, which we will now talk about. We are now in a Greek Orthodox chapel underneath the Golgotha. This is known as the chapel of the first man, Adam. And according to the tradition in the church, this is where Adam is buried. Adam is the one who committed the original sin. And because of this original sin, we are told in Christian theology, there is death and suffering in the world. We are all born sinners. It is the role of the second man, Jesus, to come to this world and offer himself as a sacrifice so we will have a way paved for us to be redeemed of the original sin. It is believed in the church that this crack on the wall of the Golgotha was caused by that earthquake that rocks Jerusalem the moment 
Jesus dies on the cross. I'm now standing in front of the tomb, Jesus' tomb, but one must use his imagination because at the time of crucifixion, in the year 33 AD, this was a deserted quarry, an open field with a few burial tombs. Everything we see around us has been built and destroyed and rebuilt much later. Of course, the tomb is empty because in the New, in the New Testament it tells us that Sunday, Maria Magdalene comes to visit the tomb. She sees the tomb is opened and exposed. There is an angel inside who asks her, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Meaning there was a resurrection. And 40 days after the resurrection, the ascension from the Mount of Olives. The significance of the tomb is symbolic, it's theological, the victory over death. The question is, could this be the location? Was this a Jewish burial site at the time of the crucifixion? Were Jews buried here? Follow me. We are standing in the Assyrian chapel here in the back of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And this is our smoking gun because what we have here is without a doubt Jewish burial tombs from the time of the crucifixion. Could this be the location of the crucifixion and burial of Jesus of Nazareth? There is your answer. The answer is yes. Sunday, when Maria Magdalene comes to visit the tomb, she sees the tomb is empty. And then she sees a man who speaks to her and she identifies him as Jesus. This is the first appearance of Jesus after the uh, uh, crucifixion and the resurrection. On our way down from the ambulatorium to Helena's chapel, we see the marks left here for centuries by Christian pilgrims coming to visit the holiest site for the Christian world. 